Eventually, it will all come out, ladies and gentlemen. Just as we have said that it will. And now on to other matters. The Internal Revenue Service is targeting churches. It appears that the more fundamentalist the church, or the more Christian the church, I should say, the more that church is targeted. The uh, first article in amendment to the Constitution for the United States of America guarantees freedom, freedom. It states that Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. By targeting some religions and not others, that's exactly what they are doing. That is exactly what they are doing. The Indianapolis Baptist Temple is under a vicious assault from the Internal Revenue Service and the United States Justice Department. Many observers have said that it is the greatest attack against religious liberty in the entire 222-year history of this nation. Now, it may be impossible to believe, but the United States government is suing the Indianapolis Baptist Church for $5.1 million. And if the church loses, it will mean that all of our religious liberty as guaranteed by the First Amendment to the United States Constitution will be gone forever. Also, every church in America will lose their religious freedom also. Have you ever seen the requirements of the Internal Revenue Service up on a church if you accept 501c3 status? You see, up until recent years, ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court has always upheld that you cannot tax a religion or religious organization. You cannot tax the money that's contributed by the congregation. But the IRS has leaned so heavily upon individual churches who did not have the money to foot the tremendous legal fight necessary and they go after the individual target, the individual members of the church, if the church does not cave in to the Internal Revenue Service and accept all of the restrictions. And on another night, ladies and gentlemen, we will cover those restrictions. But in the meantime, see what you can do to help these people. And it has nothing to do with it being a Baptist church or a Christian church. It has to do with the infringement of our freedoms by a despotic tyrant known as the Internal Revenue Service, an arm, well, it's not even an arm of government. We've proven that. It's an outlaw agency. An outlaw agency. Ladies and gentlemen, see what you can do to help these people. Here's their telephone number, 317-783-6753. That's 317-783-6753. The address is 2711 Southeast Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. That's 2711 Southeast Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. That's the Indianapolis Baptist Church. Telephone 317-783-6753. Once again, the address, 2711 South East Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. So, see what you can uh, do to uh, help those uh, good people. And uh, for the rest of this broadcast, we're going to be discussing immigration, and then we're going to uh, open the phones, ladies and gentlemen. Also, look in your own particular uh, neighborhood, in your city, your county, and find out what churches the IRS is going after there. And you must help all churches, regardless the denomination, and regardless of whether you like that particular religion or not. It's about freedom of religion, not about freedom of your particular religion. And if you don't understand that, 
And why should anybody support you in your fight? You see, we must support freedom in this country. Freedom for all people of all religions and all points of ancestral origin. If you're not willing to do that, you will not long have freedom. That, ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee. Americans have lost the concept of freedom. And what began is a country where everybody was welcome and everybody minded their own business has now become millions of divisions of little groups with their own special agendas out to get everybody else's freedom. And I, for one, am absolutely sick of it. Sick of it, ladies and gentlemen. It is a terrible situation. I don't like it. I'm not going to uh, put up with it, to tell you the truth. I'm not going to allow anybody else to get away with it. I'm going to shine a spotlight on it whenever I can. Okay. Immigration. Remember the caller last night who wanted to talk about immigration and said that our country was being destroyed by these people who have come across the border? Ladies and gentlemen, those people are not the ones at fault. They are being used, abused, and in the process, they will be re-enslaved in the same kind of system, just like the one that they were trying to escape from when they came to this country. Just like your forefathers, just like your ancestors, when they came to this country, they are escaping religious, political, and economic persecution. They're coming here for what they perceive to be a better life. And as soon as they get here, the socialist machine picks them up, indoctrinates them, points them in the right direction to further the socialist needs of the New World Order. It accomplishes several different things, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, it dilutes and eventually will destroy the traditional culture of the American people. This we know. This we can see in areas where it is heavily overrun with immigrants. The people who are allowing them to come across the borders in these great hordes know this. It's the whole purpose of it. Are you really telling me that the United States government can't seal off a section of its own border and prevent the mass immigration? are the mass illegal immigration of all of these people. Now, if they're telling you that, I'm going to tell you right now it's a lie. You put me in charge of the Immigration and Naturalization Service, and I can seal the border, and I guarantee you that every once in a while, one or two or three people might slip over, but not any more than that. It's not a difficult thing to do, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, it's very easy. It is much easier than any of you would imagine. Now, there's nothing wrong with these people. Never has been. For there is not one of us in this studio or listening to this broadcast who, if we found ourselves in the same terrible conditions, would not try to do exactly the same thing. Not a one of us. Not one. So to criticize people for attempting to make their lives better or to make the lives of their families better is wrong. However, they are breaking the law by coming across the borders illegally. I believe in the law. The United States of America allows a certain number of people to immigrate into the United States each year. And they don't they do not, ladies and gentlemen, discriminate against any races, religions, or countries. Once that quota is filled, no more people should come into this country because it is against the law. But if they come into this country against the law, they cannot be persecuted. 
because they're trying to make a better life for themselves. You can't say that they are destroying this country. No. I told you last night, ladies and gentlemen, that the traitors, the people who are destroying this country, are in Washington, D.C. The people who are allowing these poor people to come across our borders are in Washington, D.C. Go talk to any border guard, any of the lowest ranked people who guard our borders against illegal immigrants coming across, and they will tell you what is wrong. They are not allowed to have the things or do the things or implement the procedures that they need to stop these people from coming across the border because the socialists in charge of our government want them to come across the border. You see, socialism must have victims in order to succeed. If there are no poor people, if there are no victims, socialism makes no inroads, makes no headway, has no successes. Why do you think the recent attempts to create victims amongst every class of people? Why do you think women are now victims? Why do you think every time they open their mouth they say, it's for the children, the poor little children? Why do you think they want to pass hate laws? You know, recently, a gay student was murdered. Now they want to pass hate laws against murdering a gay student. I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, murder is murder, whether it's a gay student, a straight student, a woman student, a man student, a Chinese student, a student that likes to sit on top of telephone poles, nude, at noon. It doesn't matter. Murder is murder, and the penalty is the stiffest that you can get. We don't need hate crime laws. There is no such thing as a hate crime. It doesn't matter who you punch in the nose, you're guilty of assault and battery. And it doesn't matter who did it. If you're caught, you're going to pay for it. If you murder somebody, it doesn't matter whether they were gay, whether they were a woman, whether they were a man, whether they were Chinese, Japanese, Mexican, Eskimo, or whether... Weather, ladies and gentlemen, in most places of the country, it was a dog. You're going to pay for it. And you can't get a stiffer penalty. And nor should you. There cannot be stiffer penalties for what happens to one over what happens to anyone else. That is not freedom. That elevates a section of society to a more privileged position than anyone else in the society, and in this society it is wrong. There's nothing wrong with immigration or immigrants. There is something wrong with the people in Washington, D.C. who are allowing vast numbers of people to flood across these borders from just about every oppressed nation in this country in this country, in this world. In this world. But let me ask you, socialist airheads, something here. Maybe one of you will have the guts to call in and answer it. If this country is such a bad place, why in the hell are all these people coming here? And why are they telling me that this country is getting closer and closer every year to the place they left to get away from this kind of oppression? Why do people who were alive in Nazi Germany tell me that they see the exact same things beginning to occur in the United States of America that occurred during Hitler's rise to power and during his reign over the Third Reich. Why is that, I wonder? 
Why are these people beginning to get scared in the country they came to to free themselves from fear? Why is it that all Americans now are afraid of their own police department? Why is that, ladies and gentlemen? Can you answer those questions? What's the solution? Do you think standing on the street corner yelling <laughs> racial slurs at Mexicans is going to make them not come across the border? Do you think it's going to make the situation any better? Do you think it's going to uh, make peace in your neighborhood? What do you think about that? Or do you think about it? Do you believe that these people really came across the border to destroy the United States of America or the state of California or that they're just out to get you? Do you think they're all running across the border jumping on welfare? No, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, unless they're single women with children, most Latin Most people with Latin ancestry are looking for a way to make money. They want to work. And they'll do almost any job. If you don't believe me, go to a Chinese restaurant. If you can find a Chinese cook back there, you're lucky. It's usually a Mexican cook. Who's doing the dishes? It's usually a Mexican or somebody from Guatemala, or El Salvador. Who's picking the vegetables on all the farms across the country? I guarantee you, you'll never see a member of the Aryan Nations out there picking fruit, or picking strawberries, or picking lettuce. No, they're Mexicans. They're from El Salvador. They're from Nicaragua. They're from... Costa Rica. They're not Canadians. Canadians come down here to escape the long lines to wait for operations in their socialist medical system. <laughs> Where no matter how much money they have, they can't pay anybody to get a closer place in the line. So they come down here, find a doctor who will perform an operation before they die. <laughs> So much for socialist medicine. Or socialized medicine, as they call it. No, folks. Wherever you'll find a low-paying job that no one else will accept, a job that pays less than welfare, you will find someone of Latin American extract working at that job. And it doesn't take more than a couple of hours after you put up the sign to get one of them. They're standing there, sometimes two or three or four, competing for that job. If you want to see who's on welfare, go to the welfare office. You'll see a lot of blacks, but you'll see mostly whites. Mostly whites are on welfare in this country. You see, the media tries to stir you up into racial antagonism by doing stories on welfare where they only show blacks. And they do it intentionally. Have you ever seen a welfare program on television where they showed white people on welfare? No. Have you ever written a letter to CBS or NBC or CNN or ABC, any of these communist puke-manipulating creeps, and ask them why they do that? Have you ever made them accountable? Have you ever decided to stop swallowing their lies and just turn off your TV or better yet, take it and give it to your two-year-old child along with a hammer for a birthday present? That's what you ought to do. You see, even those of you who think that you are educated, who think that you're on top of things because you listen to this broadcast and others, still fall for the manipulations. You still 
buy it. You still sit down to dinner and watch Dan Rather Not on the news, and you still believe what you see and hear. That's the power of the boob tube. Don't tell me that you don't, because I go to these patriot meetings. I travel around the country, and I speak, and I talk to people. And by and large, most of the people in this country are under the impression that only blacks are on welfare. And that is a lie. A most despicable lie. It is a purposeful lie created by the media in order to pit the races against each other. The lie that Mexicans are coming across the border to destroy this country is another one. You want to go after somebody? Go after the rabble-rousers who go in amongst these people and recruit them to socialist or Marxist causes like the militant cause now where they actually want to take up arms and go against the people of the United States of America. To, and, the, and these people are so stupid, they actually think their lives are going to be better if they do this. They think that if they take back Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California and make them once again a part of Mexico, that their lives will be better. You know what will happen to them, ladies and gentlemen? They'll still be the poor, ignorant, uneducated serfs that they were before because it will still be the same Mexican government. You see, these people are manipulated. They don't know that. They can't see past the end of their nose just like most of you listening. But I guarantee you, what it will do it will pit Mexicans against Americans. It will result, if they ever desire to really take up arms and start such a fight, in them all being killed really quickly. Really quickly. Because no great army from Mexico is going to come up and help them. They'll be mowed down like cockroaches. To get caught when you turn on the light in the kitchen in the middle of the night. Oh, cockroaches! And that's the end of that. Let's take your calls in a few minutes. About four minutes, right after we do the uh, WBCQ thing at the top of the hour. We'll open the phones and take your calls. And uh, see what you have to say about all of this. You see... The guy that called last night had a good topic that's worthy of a lot of talk. It's a worthy topic. It's a real problem, both to the Mexican authorities and to our authorities, to the Mexican people and to the people in this country who are affected by this. But it's not a racial issue. And it's not an issue where you go down and you get in front of some poor Mexican's face who's just trying to make his life better and start screaming and yelling at him and blame all your problems upon him or her. That's only guaranteed to create more problems. Problems that I guarantee, once they start, you'll wish had never started. Some of you who have become engaged in some of those kinds of exchanges already know that. Already know it. And oil comes from a place in California where it's a big issue all year long, and then it builds to a great crescendo every time there's an election. Every time. And you also have the problem of the Democratic Party getting these people to vote illegally. Illegally. And don't get me wrong, folks, I don't support the Republicans either. But the Republicans aren't out soliciting the votes of illegal aliens. The Democratic Party does that. Because they're the Socialist Party. They're the ones.
who are influenced by large sums of money given to them by the enemies of the United States of America. Communist China, in particular, who has sworn and made no secret of the fact that they want to destroy the United States of America. In fact, they want to destroy all forms of government other than communism or socialism. They'll accept socialism because it always leads to communism. And then, because of the influence of these large sums of money, our president and our secretary of defense and our secretary of state begin to give our military and commercial secrets to the communist Chinese, which seriously endangers the safety of all Americans. You're listening to WBCQ, Monticello, Maine, USA. The phone lines are now open, folks. 520-333-4578 is the number. And for the rest of the hour, we'll be taking your calls. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Brandy Colbert. I'm calling on behalf of AT&T Long Distance Services. Good night, Brandy. Don't ever call this number again. We're not interested. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. Can you believe that, folks? Uh, let's get some music here. Something that we'll all just love. <laughs> I'm calling on behalf of. <laughs> let's do this. We haven't done this one. I'm going to do this one. I don't think. I don't know. 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 I don't know.